when we have classes in the zoo, very often a child will ask me, uh, what's your favourite animal in the zoo? And that's a question I find really, really difficult to answer because there, there are so many animals in the zoo that I like. I usually end up saying silverback pale gorilla because in the 20 years that I've been here, we've had several. And there's one in particular called KK. KK was brilliant. He was so magnificent, so laid back, so cool. He would catch a bird, look at it and think, oh, that's nice, and then just let it go again. I also love birds, so I would sometimes answer uh, white-tailed sea eagle because, again, they're so majestic. And even when they, they are, just lovely. Many people think of animals and they love cute and cuddly animals. Uh, me, I prefer a bit less cute, maybe a little quirky, a little odd. Some people think some of our animals are quite ugly. If you look at an ostrich, for example, it's got an extremely wacky looking face and neck. But I don't think they're ugly. We did a video recently on golden lion tamarins and then listen to the name golden lion tamarins. They're not just cute and cuddly, they're beautiful. Right? They're gorgeous. Beautiful fur, orange fur. Uh, <coughs> Lion tamers, lion, big furry bit around their head. They're just fantastic animals to look at. But I like another tamer. I like these pied tamarins that hopefully you can see behind me here. And there's just something, something about them. You would never say these guys are pretty, but I don't think they're ugly. Another name for this tamarin is the bare-faced tamarin because they've got these black almost hairless and you can see little white eyebrows and little white whiskers and white bits inside their ears but really they've got a bare black face and if you look at the ears the ears are a bit wacky as well they're all folded up uh, so, so he does look a bit funky but i don't think i would ever call him ugly and these guys are critically endangered i keep saying this but this is what zoos are like these guys are critically endangered which means they have an extremely high risk of extinction in the wild. And that's mainly because the forest, the rainforest where they live, in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, there's a, a city there, a city called Manaus, and it's getting bigger. There's already two, over two and a half million, or nearly two and a half million people there, and it's expanding, which means that the forest is getting destroyed as well. Which means there's less forest for these guys to, to, to live in in and around Manaus and even more they're at their income in the little bits of rainforest that are left they're in competition with another tamarin there's a tamarin called a red-handed tamarin which looks a bit funky as well these funny red feet <laughs> so these guys they're not much bigger than the pie tamarins but these guys are a lot more timid so when it comes to competition for space in the, in the remaining rainforest it's usually these guys that lose it so habitat destruction and competition for space are big problems they're also caught and eaten people like monkey meat and they're also caught and sold as pets at this point the curator who's in charge of all of these has asked me to say in my broadest scottish accent that they're all doomed doomed i tell you that's because she's a big dad's army fan uh, but really, I hope they're not doomed, right? There's huge efforts to conserve these guys. There's been campaigns, education campaigns, since the 1980s. They're just, in, in 2005, the city of Manaus voted to have the Pied Tamar as their mascot, just to try and get people to, to start loving it, to realising that fantastic animal it is and how lucky they are that this is the only place that they, they live really so and that has worked to some extent but i'm sure COVID's got a lot to do with it there's lots of poverty in that region so if you can catch a tamarind and sell it for meat or sell it as a pet there will be people who, who need to do that and people who are desperate enough to, to do that kind of thing so there are, people are being educated to try and get them to to stop hunting these animals for food and for the pet trade. Um, Brazilian government has always been very good. 
they have built lots of uh, reserves, forest reserves to have spaces that are safe spaces for the, the pine tamarinds. In 1987, um, Jersey, Durrell, the Durrell Conservation Trust, they acquired, they were allowed, they were given a license to take a load of pie tamarinds from the forests in Brazil. The pioneer was definitely Jersey Zoo. So they acquired a load of pie tamarinds and they bred them successfully. It took them a while to get uh, used to a new animal and, and look after it properly and get them breeding, but they did. And in 2005, some of their ones went to a, a, a zoo in France called Mulhous Zoo. Success came in 2009. We got some from Mulhous Zoo and we looked after them well and we, have, we bred them as well. We have five at the moment, three girls who live at the top of the zoo and these two boys here. So these are our pied tamarins, cheeky, funky looking little monkeys that are critically endangered and we at Belfast we love them and we're very proud to be part of the effort to try and save them.